So I mentioned in a previous video that uh, I use servo saver linkages uh, for all of my opening panels and the body doors are going to be no different. Uh, but you might be asking, what is a servo saver and how do you set one up? Uh, this is sort of the DIY approach to making a servo saver. Um, this would be the linkage between the door hinge and the servo. Um, and normally, in a normal linkage, it would be a rigid linkage between the servo horn and the hinge. Um, if you had any sort of unexpected impacts or if you had maybe someone going up and pulling on a door and the uh, servo wasn't energized, you would potentially break that link, uh, either break the servo, damage the servo, or damage the, uh, the hinge. The idea behind the servo saver is that uh, this linkage is actually free to rotate through this little piece here and the springs provide strain relief. So even if the servo doesn't move, uh, you can actually move the linkage and the idea being that it would absorb that impact uh, and protect all the components. So this is basically how it looks when it's done. Uh, the parts that I use, um, these uh, easy connectors from Dubro, uh, these are what attach uh, to the actual servo arm right there. Uh, they actually come with a set screw that you can screw in the top there if you wanted to uh, fix the linkage, but obviously we're not going to use that. Um, and then you can just press on the uh, little nylon nut underneath there. Uh, the collars that I use are the Dubro 1 16th inch. This is number 595, and this here is number 605. Um, and these fit my one millimeter rod really, really well. Uh, they do come with a little Allen key, and there's a tiny set screw on each side so that when you, uh, when you configure everything, you just sort of set the position of these collars and then lock them into place. And then for the springs, uh, these springs actually came from a really cheap bag of ballpoint pens that I picked up at the dollar store. Uh, in the dome, my, uh, the space was really limited, so I ended up cutting each of these in half and doing a smaller linkage on either side. Uh, but for the body, we've actually got plenty of room, uh, so this will actually allow us to give, uh, you know, plenty of, of strain relief um, to the linkage itself. Um, so before I put this in, though, um, I had to basically dry fit it. Um, I set the the servo to one of its limit, uh, to its, its, its openmost limit, um, and then uh, measured the rod and cut it to fit and then installed all of that. So let's go uh, put that in the droid and see how it works. So it is important to know that when you're going to be working on these door servos uh, and installing them, particularly for the bread pan doors, you need to take everything apart. Uh, the door pan, the bread pan servos uh, actually go beneath the shoulder modules. So one of them sits down there, another one sits up there. And so in order to get those in and to be able to change the servo horns, you need to take the shoulders, the legs, the top ring, everything else off. Um, so that's a, a bit of a pain. And I know I'll be revisiting this at some point because the Shadow MD code doesn't support body uh, servos out of the box. So I'm gonna have to custom code all of that at some point um, in the very distant future. But for now, I wanted to get these servos in and these linkages uh, hooked up so that the doors would stay closed. So for the uh, data port logics servo, um, I've installed that one here. This one is only held in with two screws on the left side there. Uh, the right side just kind of slides into that little shelf there. I did have to uh, cut away a little bit of support. There was, uh, there was a little support there that was blocking me from being able to slide that in, but that was easy enough. These are really tight fits. I've had to do a good bit of filing um, for the bread pan servos. Um, but you can see here where it just uh, connects to the hinge. Um, to get this installed, I simply uh, got the servo into place and then uh, with everything else loosely in there and just applied a little bit of compression to the springs and then tightened those down. I also did make sure that the uh, servo was positioned in its fully um, extended position. So this is essentially the off state for the, uh, for the servo. And um, let me hook up a power supply and we can see how it works. All right, so I've hooked up a power supply. I'm just feeding it uh, five volts right now. And I've got this 
really basic servo tester here. It allows me to hook up a couple of servos and it's got a little potentiometer there that I can dial it in. And then that's connected there to the servo. So let's see how this works. If we go nice and slow, you'll see how the servo saver, the spring linkage there doesn't really impede the ability for the door to open. You can actually go all the way back out here. Um, and uh, yeah, it's actually working pretty well. Now this uh, servo has a larger range of motion than is really needed to open the door. And again, that's something that I will adjust in, in, uh, in code later on. But um, you can see though that even if I were to ex overextend this well beyond where it should, not only is the arm flexible enough, but the springs absorb some of that extra strain. And then with the servo all the way closed, I could reach around if I wanted to, and I could try and open up this door. You can see that I could still open the door a good bit and the servo saver is doing its job and it's preventing that servo from getting the brunt of, of, that, of that action. So if we go back over to my dome, uh, I did this uh, actually a couple of years ago now, but all of the servos in here have their own version of the servo savers in there. Uh, due to space constraints, as I mentioned, I had to cut the springs in half, but the basic concept is the same and they all, they all work really well. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and get the others in uh, the body and we should be able to wrap that part up. All right, so we've got all three of the door servos in. You've got the right bread pan door, left bread pan, and the data port logics. I've also slid the shoulders back in. Uh, don't forget that the shoulders also hold in the bread pan tops. So those uh, need to be put in or slid into place. Uh, I don't know that I'm even gonna bother gluing them. Uh, the shoulder modules hold them in place. Um, I have uh, taped into place the charge bay uh, top. I don't think I'm going to glue that in because I might still need to do a little bit of work with the electronics there. And then the data port, uh, that will be, I'll be able to get that in. About the only thing I might need to take off is the servo for uh, the utility arms. But uh, yeah, with these in there now, um, I think that's pretty much set to go. So one last thing that I will add here, and this is just my own observation, but I thought I would share, and I'm no expert in servos, uh, but I've started to experiment with the difference between some of the more expensive servos and some of the cheaper servos. And some of you might've been wondering uh, if there was a particular reason why I was using the more expensive Futaba servos in the body uh, versus something that's a little bit cheaper off the shelf. And it really comes down to the fact that I'm gonna have to uh, exert really fine control over these servos. And once I hooked up the Futabas uh, to this little servo tester and compared it to the cheaper servos, I noticed a startling difference. Um, and it really comes down to the response time. If I were to change this potentiometer really fast, you'll see that the Futaba responds much, much faster. And the cheaper one is kind of all over the place. If I go slow, it's similar but the Futaba is generally a lot less twitchy. You see, there was a jump there. So um, just a little word of warning that that's kind of the difference that I'm starting to discover with some of the servos. Uh, the Futabas were expensive, um, but uh, I'm thinking that they're probably gonna be worth it in the end.